Keeping track of your emails every day can be a complete nightmare, especially if you're in a project context and those emails just keep flooding in. Add to that, perhaps your project has to work with multiple shared mailboxes or maybe just multiple normal exchange mailboxes, but you need to keep an eye out for tasks that may land in any of those mailboxes. Well, I'm going to show you a technique now that can cater for shared mailboxes and your own exchange mailboxes and look for tasks that are important to you. But better than that, it can automatically create you planner tasks so all of that work flooding into your inboxes is handled in a managed and orderly way so you can forecast the work you need to do going forward. Don't forget to like and subscribe as you watch this video and do ask any questions in the comments. This video builds upon some previous ones I did all about moving items from email to planner, but this particular skill is going to give you that superpower where you no longer need to scan multiple mailboxes for your work in any given day. Enjoy. What I've got on screen here is a typical start point for a lot of processes in our business. We have email. This email might land into inboxes from, let's say, for example, different clients. It might be different departments. They may or may not have attachments. A use case you might have, for example, is emails coming into an inbox where there is a request or a proposal. And what you want to do is you want to grab that proposal and according to a planner board that you review daily, weekly, whatever, you might want to work down the tasks and review the attachments and decide what action to take. But what you don't want to do is go rooting around in email inboxes, navigating your way through all of that mess every single day, using up your time. Instead, what you want to do is just arrive at your meeting, have the planner tasks in front of you and be able to deal with the work that you need to. So here's two example emails I've got set up. They're going to go to shared mailboxes. This technique that I'm going to show you will work equally well with normal mailboxes, but there's just a slight tweak in some of the background administration that you'll need to do. And I'll talk about that. So let's kick off. First of all, there's going to be two emails that will land. You can see here one shared mailbox, another shared mailbox. I've put a title in, I've put some body text in, and each of them I've grabbed some images on this one and I've grabbed a document in this case. Let me just send those and then I can talk you through what's going to happen. You can see on screen here that this flow ran successfully and it might look relatively simple, but there's a reasonable amount of configuration behind the scenes. And let me just step you through that. So what you're seeing on screen is a flow run for one of those emails. The important thing to register here, if I just click edit, is that I've set this particular flow up to monitor multiple inboxes, and that's crucial to this uh, flow being useful to me. I could have multiple flows. I could have one flow per shared mailbox, but I want to manage one place and continually add mailboxes to that one place. And this is how I've done it. You can see here I've got the two mailboxes being monitored. This is just a standard when a new email arrives action or trigger, sorry, in Power Automate. If I just delete it and I'll rebuild it to show you what it looks like, we'll just get rid of that and we'll add the trigger and we'll go and search for email triggers. So we're looking for the Office 365 Outlook group and when a new email arrives version 3. That's the one you want. So if we have a look at the parameters, all I've done is I've said make keep watch for an email address. And I can just type that email address in here. And I've got two that I can set up because I've used them, it's remembered them. That's quite handy. Um, and it will just monitor the inbox for those email addresses. Now you can set other things. You can decide whether you want to exclude emails where there's no attachments. So for example, only look for emails with attachments. I've got that turned off. You can choose to have these things forwarded to a particular folder, but here this is just all default and all it's doing is monitoring those two mailboxes. Now, the big question that I had in my mind that I'd just like to divert to show you is why am I using this trigger as opposed to, I'll just delete this and there is another trigger. If we look in the list of triggers here, there is a trigger that suggests it will monitor for when a new email arrives in a shared mailbox. Now, this looks identical to the one that we've just tried, but it doesn't work the same. What you'll try to do is you'll try to put in, for example, M365, this is my one, and maybe the UI infers that you can do this, M365 shared too. When you save this flow, it will not work because this particular trigger can't cope with testing multiple email addresses to see if they've been fired. Whereas the one that I did show you, again, just delete it, apologies for repetition, but it's kind of worthwhile showing you this. The when a new email arrives, this one, 
can cope when we do the advanced filter with multiple email addresses in its to field. And again, the next question you might ask yourself is, well, hang on, that isn't the email address where these have been landed, is it? Well, what I've actually done in the background, and I'll just very quickly show you this, is if we go to Exchange Admin and we look at Mailboxes, what I've actually done to make this work is I've set up mail forwarding on that mailbox. Important to keep the uh, message in both the original mailbox and the one you forwarded it to. So here I've forwarded this to myself. And if you notice, the eagle eyes of you might have noticed, back in the flow, when this new email arrives connection is actually authenticated to that same email address here. So what's actually happening is, although this is, let's say, a personal mailbox, because mails are being forwarded to that personal mailbox, anything in the remit of that account, the John Mandeville account in my case, is being monitored. And as soon as one arrives, this action is actually picking it up. I can't fully explain exactly why that's happening, but it's a fantastic little hidden feature that I discovered to let me monitor multiple shared mailboxes. So as a recap, what you need to do is use this trigger when an email arrives and set up a mail forward from your shared inbox. Then what you can do is you can start to do some clever stuff like storing the inbox for the planner team. So um, I'm going to store the recipients or the two mail address. What that means is when I sent it to M365 shared one, it'll store that value here. And using that value, what you can then do is go on and start to use other actions in Power Automate to decide where you want to put particular actions from that email. So let me just step you through that. Now I've explained the importance of this trigger here. I'll go back to the actual run and I can talk you through it. So we can see here, this, this has run and it's run in this case for the mailbox whose ID is shared one. It's stored that piece of information here. This task ID is going to be used later on for adding to Planner dynamically. I'll talk to, you, talk to you about that one in a moment. That's just set up as a generic variable, called it task ID. This action here is important. It's a switch. What it will do is allow you to have one or many different branches that the flow can go down. You can see here I've terminated a lot of them because I don't want them to work. But what I have done is I've set up the different legs to show what will happen if, for example, an email comes in with the M365 email address on or the M65 shared to email address. Let me just go back into the flow there and show you what I've set up. So what we're doing is we're watching on the body of that mailbox. So store the mailbox, we watch that, that's an email address. Depending what we find, so in this case M365 shared one, in this case M365 shared two, we're going to perform the actions in that leg of the switch. Really important, this is a switch action. So then what you do is we just create a task on a board. For me, I've got planner board one. I'll use a subject to the email as my task. And this is the name of the bucket that I've got on the planner board. So if you have a look at our planner board, it sits there. What I wanted to do was add the body of the email into the planner board. So I've used this action here, HTML to text, to make it look a bit prettier. And I've passed in the body. If I don't do that, I'll just get HTML on my planner task. This action here is important because what I'm then going to do is I'm going to place that body into the description on the planner task. So whenever I create a new planner task, I have the ability to add notes. That's what it calls the description. So that's what I'm going to do. So the other important thing, because I'm going to leave this group here, is that I'm going to catch the task ID of that planner task that I just created so I can use it later on to add attachments to if those attachments exist in the email. Here this is just a set variable action and what that's doing is it's adding the values to the initialized variable that I created earlier. I've done it like this so that each leg can uniquely set up a task ID into that variable above which means that no matter how many legs I've got I'm always going to end this section of my flow with a task on the right board, because I've noted where that board's going to be 
with each of these individual actions. You can see this one is a second board. Each of them is going to have a task and I'm going to have a unique ID for the task that I've just created. For many of my emails that may be enough. So the next step that I want to take for some of my emails is to create attachments on those planner tasks. And here we've got a condition. Let's just zoom up for you. The condition tests to see whether the email that's triggering this flow has an attachment. That's a property of the trigger. So if we scroll down here, I can show you the trigger coming in. In fact, let's just type it here. Has attachment. So when a new email arrives as the trigger, that's the property you want to hook into. And if it's true, then we know there's an attachment. There's a further test I do in lots of other videos, which is to say, okay, for every attachment that I've got, so for each of those attachments, just check that it's a genuine attached file and not just an image. And that's why we've got this other leg to say, is it an inline attachment, i.e. just a picture? And if not, great, let's go ahead and do the work on the attachment. I've done this in another video, but I'll quickly recap it for you. What we do is we get the current attachment, so we hook into the message ID from the email trigger, and we hook into the attachment ID that's in this loop, and then we go and create a file in the document library. We give the file a name, so in this case I'm using the name of the attachment, and this is an important piece of information. Every attachment, if I just show you what that looks like, has something called content bytes. So when we get the current attachment, that action there results in these three items here, and it's content bytes that you want. What I'll do is I'll go and create a file in your document library. Now this next step is important, I've discovered. It's important to go and add something to that document, and I'll explain why in a moment. If you update the file properties, you can see here what I've done is I've said, okay, well, I've just created a file. I'm going to use the ID of that create file. So let's just type ID. So it's the body item ID, and I put that in there. What do we want to update? Well, for me, I've just put the person that sent the email in the title column on my document library. What that then does is it allows me to use the outputs from this update, update file properties to get a link to that specific file. If you don't do this, I'll try and explain this, and I please do ask questions if this doesn't make sense. If I don't do it and I just try to use when I create the file, if you have a look, there is no specific link property that I can hook into. I can't get a link to that document. So what I discovered is I have to use this update file properties and when that is done you'll notice there are way more properties that are exposed to me and if I scroll down here slowly you'll see it. Give yourself a shout if you spot it. There it is, link to item. That allows me then to store that in a compose and then update the task details and I've shown you this again in another video update the task details for the very specific ID. That's why we saved the task ID here, because it could be this one or it could be this one. Use that and basically put attachment as the title, which we could configure, and a link, which is the link we've just grabbed. Excuse me, that's too big for you. Link we've just grabbed over here. We place that into this JSON here. What that will then do, I'll just run this to show you what it looks like, is that will then paste that information into the planner task that's already been created. And in that way, with that structure, you can have that full monitoring of multiple inboxes, go down different legs to create planner tasks where you want them, store the documents in a SharePoint library. You'll probably need to think about where that library is going to be and what permissioning you want on that library. But certainly you'll need to make sure that anybody who's got access to your planner boards can also see documents in that library. You'll see here we have a successful run where if I flip over, let's just see where it's put it. We've got a file with this attachment that I can click on and this particular one opens up the Word links that I've got. So in that way, I hope it's helpful. It is quite a complex flow. There's quite a bit going on with it. But you can see that with a little planning and a bit of setup, you can have a very flexible orchestration flow from multiple inboxes that creates planner tasks, which means your hands are off your inbox, which is the goal of all of these kind of videos, to give you some time back.